Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Friday night in the shop. It's just after work when you're seeing this. Sun's going down. What a beautiful, beautiful night out. It's been uh, it's been calm at night. It's been cold though. I don't know about where you guys are, but it's been it's been chilly here at night. I got chainsaw bars on the mind. Um, Brock from B Ray Farms was nice enough to send me. This beautiful, uh, lightweight Sumara bar. I've never had one of these, and I've never really been able to find these in Canada. So, I was, I'm not going to lie, friends. I was really excited when he's like, hey, would you like to try a Sumara bar and some Archer chain? Now, I've never tried this Archer chain. And, and he said, you know, if I'd like some straight feedback on it. Um... Some people really like this chain, some people don't, which, that's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting that one man's awesome chain is another man's I didn't like it chain. Um, could that be to do with wood species? Probably. How dirty is your wood? How you file? I don't really argue about chains. Um, my favorite chain is Oregon EXL. That's, that's my gold standard. Uh, still RS is number two. Um... The C83 somewhere in there, the the, the Husqvarna chain. Um, I've had mixed results with that. I got one C83 chain right now. The left side is rock hard for filing. The right side e files easily. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's like the temper on the left teeth are is super hard, and the right teeth is kind of soft. Very strange. Anyways, Brock said, hey, do you spin your own chain? And believe it or not, friends, I do not. I order loops of chain. Um, I don't go through a ton of chain. I'm not a tree professional. If I was running a tree service, for sure, I'd be buying it by the roll. But it is nice when you got a new saw to just be able to count some loops and, and make your own loop of chain. So Brock kind of lit a fire under my butt. And I said, you know what? I will order uh, a chain breaker and a spinner. So I ordered uh, the Oregon 2454 9b and the 2454 8b and uh it is a 325 and 3 8 chain breaker set and spinner um i'm gonna have to get that mounted to the bench and we will spin up some of this archer chain and let's run that next time we go cutting i'd like to try it out and see um who knows, friends? I may like it. Cool thing about Brock was, he just said, I just want feedback, good or bad. Those are the kind of people I want to work with. Um, I learn more from sending a saw to somebody that they don't like the saw than I do from when they gush over it and say this is the greatest saw ever. Today's video, I want to I want to get the weights on some of these bars just to show you guys. I get asked that. Uh, I want a long bar, but... You know, I'm worried about the weight of the bar. Now, long bars definitely weigh more than short bars, and the chains weigh more, but you can hold it here. You're not doing this all day, reaching out. I'm a big fella. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm strong in the upper body, right? I hang sheet metal all day. I tend to muscle my way through life, but I find as I'm getting older, that's harder on my body, and I can do less work if I'm doing this all the time. So um, long bars have really worked for me because... I can go to the bush now, fall four to six trees. Um, you know, blue spruce is what I've been cutting lately. Uh, limb them, buck them, load them into my truck and have a full cord within a couple of hours loaded in my truck and I'm not completely gassed. I can do that twice in a day now. When I was running short bars and kneeling down, I just, I find, I find I was getting really tired, uh, really tired. So, um, anyhow friends, I'm going to bring you guys in, up and over show you these different bars um four of these are 28s two of them are 32s and i brought the good old 24 because let's face it this is the gold standard for long bars for most people uh this is a husqvarna pattern 24 inch 58 gauge and uh it's pretty much brand new lots of paint wear on it but i guess that's just what these do uh, i've had these before and after a couple of winters cutting they had almost no paint on them so but these are good bars. They're sturdy. They last. And uh, so I will use this as my gold standard weight for anybody that doesn't use uh, lightweight or long bars. But um, honestly, friends, if you're going to go long bar, 
spend the money, buy a quality lightweight bar. You'll thank your, your back will thank you later. Anyhow, I'm going to bring you guys in. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what each one of these are and then let's put them on the scale and get weights on them. I'm curious. I've never done this. What's the difference in weight between a 24, a 28, a 28 light, a 32 and a 32 light? How much difference in weight is there actually between them? So I'll get you guys set up and let's check this out. I'm excited actually. You know what else I'm excited about friends? Uh, I got the rest of the parts for my pick em up truck here. Old, <laughs> the old wood weasel. She needs some love. Uh, I have a few things left on this truck and then it's perfect. She's ready to go coast to coast. But uh, more on that in another video. We got to do some truck work. Anyhow, so I got my 28 inch or 24 inch rather. 3 8 58 gauge. So this would be your standard 84 drive link. This is the gold standard, right? This is what everybody runs. Uh, everybody everywhere has a 24 inch bar pretty much. That would be your big bar. And uh, I have cut a lot of wood. In fact, hold on. I have one of these. Here you go, friends. This is my first 24 inch bar. And uh, this was pretty new when I got it. I think it was new. Uh, it's a little rusty now. I don't use her much anymore. She just kind of hangs up in the shop, but yeah, this thing has cut wood like crazy. You guys can see I've opened up this and modified it over the years, but this is my first 24 inch bar. And let me tell you, I thought I was on top of the world. I was Johnny Longbar when I got this thing. Okay. Next up, this is a 28 inch. Um, this is a Dolmar, large mount Dolmar pattern bar. Uh, this is for that Dolmar that was sent to the channel. Uh, I'm going to have to take that cutting soon. I'm actually anxious to run that saw. This is a 404, 404 63 gauge. This is an old school organ. You can see the tip here. These tips are getting hard to get, I believe. But, uh, and this thing, this thing's got a lot of wear on it. But w whatever, it's a good, it's a good usable bar. And, uh. Rails aren't too bad. It's been, it needs a little bit of a dressing job, but um, pretty cool that this was sent to the channel. Okay, so this is a 28. Holtz Forma, friends. Now, you guys know where I'm at with the Holtz Forma work saws. Um, these bars, they're not horrible if you're an occasional cutter, if you're a firewood cutter. Um, you guys know I've had these bars for a year and a half. I haven't used them daily. But I've used them enough. They're not horrible, friends. Um, after we weigh these, I want to compare this to a regular bar. These do have their issues. One thing I will say, um, they are spring-loaded. When you're falling trees, these things are super bouncy. But they're super, super light. Maybe. Maybe uh, when we weigh them, I'll say, okay, it's not as light. You guys have seen this. This one came all the way from England. Again, your guys' support makes this stuff happen. I... Another bar that I can't find here. Um, my dealer that I deal with doesn't even really carry these. I've never seen one there. Okay, this has the milled out slots here, 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 and here. Um, not a super light bar. Um, very stiff, very sturdy. Um, it's a nice bar, and let's be honest, friends, that's one of the best looking bars in the business. You put that on your saw and you pull up to the wood pile, uh, you'll be fighting the ladies off, let me tell you. <laughs> okay here's that sumara from brock i haven't put this on a saw yet this in my hand i think it feels a little bit lighter than this one um pretty much a similar bar uh way better oil hole notice the oil hole in this one's really big it's on an angle i wouldn't even drill that out um this is a 58 gauge 3 8 92 drive links okay now next up, the good old, you know, Oregon power cut, power match, they used to call these. This one, this one got pinched one time. Um, this lives on a big saw generally, like uh, 394, stuff like that. This is a heavy bar, but again, gold standard, uh, look, no flex, you can't bend this bar. Replaceable tip. This is this would be your your standard if you're just getting into professional bars. This would be this would probably be what a guy starts with. Nothing wrong with them. They last. They are heavy, um, but they're good bars. Uh, it, it's really hard to wear them out. And the creme de la creme. 
This one came from Walker's. Uh, Buck had sent this to me one day. I can't remember what the deal was. I think I'd done some work for him or something, and we did a little trade ski. But uh, these are hard to get. Uh, this right now, friends, is my favorite bar. Uh, ES Light. This is a 3H 63 gauge. This is a 32 inch. This thing's light. Um, I'd say that's probably the lightest bar on the market right now. So if you're looking for light, that's probably what you want. So, um, so you guys go 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 28s, and 232s. I'm going to stack these all up and let's get the scale going. And I'm curious, like, for instance, this thing's, this is a big old school heavy bar. It's cool. Like, what's the weight difference between this and these three? If you want to jump up, uh, four inches ain't that much, but it feels like a lot more, um, when you're cutting. Um, I can't stand up and buck with this. I can with these. I don't typically run a 32. I don't know why, because I'm a tall fella and a 32 is probably the right size for me. I gotta, I gotta spend some more time. One thing about this bar being 63 gauge, uh, 63 gauge is not common in my locality. 58 and 50 are. Um, so it's hard for me to get chain for that locally. Um, it just is what it is. But, uh, so I've been running skip on that and I generally don't like skip chain. It's, it's not as smooth for all the limbing and stuff that I do, but anyhow, I, I gotta run this thing more often. Okay, let's set up the scale and which ones are the heaviest. Okay, and I figured just to get us a nice flat surface, you guys know me, non-science science, got a cheap ground scale. Okay, we're in pounds and ounces. Okay, so for those of you that run a standard 24, let's zero that. And again, non-science science. Three pounds, 3.6 ounces, okay? So three pounds, 3.6 ounces. So we'll just call this three pounds. Um, interesting. Okay, so we'll call that, that's our, that's our, our standard bar. Um, next, the old school Dolmar. This thing feels like she's got some weight, good steel. Three pounds, 13.4 ounces. So that's almost a four pound bar. So there's definitely some weight difference between that and that, but that's cool, right? That's way cooler than that. You put that on an old saw, eh, that, oh, that's cool. Okay, so three pounds, three ounces is our lightest. Okay, so this Holtz Forma 28 inch is an, uh, is an ounce and a bit heavier. That's it. So uh, this is the same weight, okay? Now, I will say, these tips are made of cheese, some kind of cheese, um, Limburger, or, look at that. Now, yeah, I don't run the tightest chains. You guys have spotted it. Okay, but there is definitely some wear on this bar. And if you guys notice, this tip is substantially wider than this bar. In fact, let's just, let's just go and show you guys. Look at the difference in the rails right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. Okay, the rails on the Holtz Forma are about half as thick as the Husqvarna, so uh, I haven't had any problems with these though. They haven't blown out tips. I do not bore cut regularly, so if you bore cut hardwood a lot, pff, I bet you this tip would go, but okay. So three pounds, three ounces, three pounds, four ounces. So that 28 inch is just as light. What I'm curious about is the Sumara versus the Husqvarna, okay. Three pounds, 4.8 ounces. So we're talking an ounce difference between this and this. So there's no difference running a lightweight 28 and a lightweight 24. Yes, the chain's a little bit heavier, but it's it's not much. Now, the funny thing is, friends, this, okay, three pounds, 4.8. They're the same weight, okay? So... This isn't going to last very long. This will. This has been a good bar. I've used this a lot now. And they're the same weight. So, um, a heavier, more substantially made bar is the same weight. Okay, so we're all about three pounds, four ounces. 
Where's the Sumara lineup? I'm curious. I feel like this might be a little bit lighter. And it is. So there you guys go. If you're looking for lightweight and a 28 and maybe you don't want to step up to the still, three pounds, two ounces. This is the lightest bar on the bench right now. Okay. Good job, Sumara. I like that. And again, that so just goes to show you. So this is lighter than that. This with a chain on it is probably the same weight as that with a chain on it. And you have a longer bar. So good job, Sumara. So already I told Brock I would test these out and we're starting with weights. I, I want to know. I want to know what I'm dealing with. Now, here's where it gets interesting. This bar is heavy. I can feel it. Putting it right in the middle. Four pounds, eight ounces. That is a heavy, heavy, heavy bar. But again, you put this on a, you know, on an 18, 20 pound power head, you don't feel it. It's balanced. This on my 394 feels perfect. Um, I've had this on several other of my bigger saws and it's like, this thing feels great on them. You almost don't even notice the weight. So, okay. So once again, we're, we're four pounds, eight ounces. Now... What do you guys think this is going to weigh? That's also 32. <laughs> Three pounds, two ounces. And what was this? Three pounds, two ounces. So, <laughs> I thought these were light. I didn't realize they were that light. So, this 32 is as light as... A 28 lightweight and it's lighter it's lighter than a 24 and it's you know it's eight inches longer so but again friends I'm not every bar on this table will cut wood um I like the way these look I've always wanted one so I'm excited to have it but like honestly friends if you're an occasional cutter and you just want a long bar pick these up they're fine they're not going to last though. Uh, like I said, the amount of wear on this thing already um, does the job though. Oh, crop duster. Okay, but I mean, these aren't cheap anymore, not in Canada. These are getting to be expensive. In fact, I wouldn't buy one of these now. These used to be $25, $30 bars. They're not here. They're like $100 now. You know, by the time you ship them and everything, it's like a buck twenty. Well, that's too much money to me. So, um, these price wise i'm not sure what these are up to i think these are about 200 canadian um i think these are actually priced better than these so if this thing wears anywhere as good as this uh i'll be a sumara fan for sure i know these are good bars uh, a lot of fellas have told me they run them and uh and again friends if you're looking just for straight up you know if you're a professional and you're falling all day I'll never wear this bar out. I won't. It, but again, these here, like this bar here is, I don't even know now, 280, 300 bucks. So, um, and again, money's money, right? You can always get more money. You can't get more fun and more still bars, but, <laughs> um, anyhow, these are definitely the most expensive. They are super nice. But again, friends, I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with this Sumara, and it is lighter. My my only complaint with these, they're they're a little heavy. They could be lighter. They could mill out one more slot. But yeah, so it's two ounces. And friends, you feel it just a little bit. Anyhow, that's pretty cool. So this weekend, uh, you guys want to watch me learn how to use a breaker and spinner? I've never used these. We're gonna do that. I got some truck work to do. And, uh, pretty exciting. I love when parts come. Oh, and I got a box of parts in the mail. I got to go pick it up from the city. Okay, sun's going down. Kind of interesting. I, I know I kind of rambled on in that video, but I get passionate about this stuff. And when I get passionate, I go, um, I'm like that. I'm, uh, I'm a strange fellow. I know that. I get all excited about things. But, uh, there you guys go. I get asked this all the time. And again, your guys' support the support of you guys out there, most of these bars on this tailgate were provided by, you know, uh, 
viewers, friends of mine, companies like B Ray Farms, check him out on Facebook. Um, I know he's a good fella. He's uh, I've heard good things about him, and uh, you guys make this stuff happen. Uh, the average guy is not going to go out and spend you know two grand just so he can figure out which twenty eight bar or twenty eight inch bar is the lightest. That's what I love about this channel. You guys have put me in a position where I can do this kind of stuff and show you the straight goods. And again, it's non-scientific. It's not an expensive scale, but you guys get the idea. Um, a lightweight 28 inch is going to weigh the same or less than a normal 24 inch. So um, if you're worried about weight, that's not really a thing. Cost could be a thing to you. But again, a bar like this Sumara for the average guy for me. Friends, I'll probably never wear this bar out. I'll have this bar for the rest of my life, probably. Um, I tend to not be hard on bars. And, uh, you know, if you have 10 or 15 bars on 10 or 15 saws and you're just the regular Joe like me, um, I'll never wear this bar out. So to me, this is a lifetime investment, like a good set of tools or a toolbox or what have you. Um, a good quality bar is going to last. Um, a cheap bar like this holds pharma friends i've probably cut let's see you see how much wear is on there i have probably cut five tanks or five loads of firewood with this like full loads and when i load this thing i load it like a cord okay this thing might have 15 tanks to reported saw on it and it's already worn the tip that much so Again, if you're going to buy these, don't expect them to last. They're okay. They work. The groove is really sloppy. Um, and that's another thing. When you buy a precision bar like a Canon or this still, I'm sure this Sumaro will be good. The groove's tight. You will feel the difference in your saw when you're cutting. Uh, I can. First time I used like a Canon bar or something like that, I was like, <sighs> like you could feel it. The, your, your sharp chain feels sharper. It cuts so much smoother. These... This is a 50 gauge bar, uh, a 58 gauge will almost fit in here already. So again though, if you're just an average fella and you cut a couple times a year and you want a long bar, this is probably for you. Anybody else probably skip these. They're, they just are what they are. And that's why I bought them. I wanted to see, right? The only way to share information is I have to experience it firsthand. And uh, you know, those bars, they're just okay. I, I don't really poo poo anything. They're, they're at a price point where they're cheap, right? But anyhow, friends, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And uh, thanks for coming to hang out on a Friday night. And uh, let's get into some shenanigans this weekend. I got stuff to do. So I'll bring you guys along with me and uh, we'll hang out. Probably do some truck work and uh, yeah, work on that 460 some more. I got parts in the mill for that 460. I want to get that thing rocking and rolling. Then I'm going to send it away. Um, and the 372, I'm going to try a new coil and a spark plug in there. Maybe we'll open up the carb. You guys heard how that thing ran. Maybe we'll jump back into that and see if I can get it running a little bit more. You know, it's 99% reliable, but that 1% bothers me. I'm that guy. It has to run perfectly. If it doesn't, it's no good. So anyhow, friends, I'm going to jump in to the question of the day. Today's question of the day is from David Tyler. Great question, David, because I'm working on the same saw right now. David has a MS-460 with a big bore, pretty much exactly what I'm working on right now. Um, I can't remember what make of big bore. I'm not up on my 460 big bores. Maybe, you know, maybe one company or a bunch make them. I don't know. But David's saying he has 24,000 squish, I believe, with a base gasket, and he's free porting. Free porting is when your piston skirt is so short that... At top dead center, you're actually not covering the exhaust port with the bottom of the piston. So he's experiencing that. Now, I don't know how much you're free porting, David. Sometimes you can play with your squish to varying degrees of success. Like if you're free porting five thousandths, I'd tell you to put a five thousandths taller um, gasket in there or put some moto seal on a gasket and try and seal it up that way. Um, but yeah, if you're free porting 10, 15 foul, there's not much you can do other than try the saw. Don't ever, don't ever write a saw off as this thing's going to be no good. You guys saw that last build I did on my 371 there. Those timing numbers were horrible. That saw ran pretty good. It's not the strongest saw, 
Um, I wouldn't send that to a logger buddy, but it ran good. It was strong. It was reliable. Uh, it idled and tuned good. Uh, not the strongest though. Way stronger than stock, but not anything that I'd send out the door. But I learned something. So try the saw like that. If it's no good, there's a couple ways you can play this game. Uh, if you don't have a lathe, this is probably not an option. If you do, try another 54 millimeter piston with a 12 millimeter wrist pin. Um, I can't think of any offhand, but do a little research and see if you can find a piston that'll fit in there. Maybe you can find a piston with a longer skirt. Um, in fact, most pistons would have a longer skirt than that big bore. That thing's really short. Or like you said, um, just put a standard bore, uh, what are those 52 millimeter? Just put a standard bore top end and cut your losses. Um, that's the game we're playing. Um, I have a saw I've been working on for about two months that I'm doing a big bore on and I'm doing all kinds of crazy things to, and it might not work. And I went into it knowing that, you know, it may be wasted time, but we do this for fun, right? At least I do. So no time is wasted when I'm puttering in the saw shop. Anyhow, hope that answered your question. And for everybody else, uh, send in those questions of the day. I'm loving doing this segment and thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.